What's up? It's me, Judy. I'm a first year medical student here in Turkey, and today we're talking about what it's like to be growing up half Japanese and half Turkish. I will timestamp every single thing that I mentioned in the down in the description below so that you can skip to the part that you're interested in. So, get started. Firstly, let me talk about my background. My mom is Japanese fully, and my father is fully Turkish. I was born in Japan but grew up in Turkey. I got all of my education in Turkey. I visit my grandparents who are living in Japan in every summer vacation and summer vacation in Turkey is three months so I quite spent a lot of time in Japan and I also went to Saturday Japanese school here in Turkey when I was in elementary school and secondary school and there we had like math and Japanese lessons with other Turkish Japanese mixed kids. My name is Rudi Beril. Rudi is my Japanese name and Beril is my Turkish name. I usually use Rudi because I don't know I quite love my name and Beril is kind of like harder for Japanese to pronounce so I usually use my name Rudy. I think Rudy is a quite easy name to spell but I get every single time in Starbucks my name wrong. It's just like four letters R-U-R-I. Is it that hard? I'm currently taking break from university but when I was in school it was pretty easier to make friends for me personally. I mean I'm not a person who is in the middle of the class but I always had friends because I think there is always something to talk and people usually notice that I'm mixed. In Turkey people usually assume that I'm Asian and in Japan people notice in first sight that I'm mixed. So I always had something to make conversation about, about culture or about foods, I don't know, about the other country. It really helped me to make friends when I was a kid and it's also like currently helping as well. In Japan, if you're a foreigner and if you cannot speak Japanese very well, I think you will kind of struggle to make friends in Japan because Japanese people are usually shy and usually not good in speaking English. So I think if you are fluent in Japan and if you're a bit extra word and if you go to them you will definitely make friends in turkey people are usually i guess a pretty extrovert when you like a new girl or new boy at school usually people come up to you and ask who you are where you're from where you're coming from so people are very open compared to japan and let's talk about bento i used to bring my own bento during the high school my mom is a chef and she's like obviously very good at cooking and she used to make a very delicious bentos for me people usually ask what i was eating and people usually say that can I taste that and usually they don't like it or sometimes they like it though I usually get like comments like what are you think it's gross and all that stuff but I usually don't care because it's their loss Japanese food is delicious I always get asked like if I'm very good at karate like people really drifting in Tokyo like Tokyo drift fast and furious and I say like no it's just a film and people get like very disappointed from that I also get quite a lot of comments about sushi people told me that it's very gross to eat raw fish but i think sushi is delicious when i get meat to people and the first time people usually ask me to speak in another language um, when i'm in japan people usually ask me to speak in turkish and when i'm turkey people usually ask me to speak in japanese i kind of sometimes get annoyed by it because it's repeating and repeating and repeating but i'm now just like get used to it we talk in japanese konnichiwa genki desu ka maruri desu sukoshi nihongo shabereba dou like that. I always feel like not being at home because I don't think like I think like fully Japanese and fully Turkish. I think my like self identification, my thoughts, my personality is very mixed. So when I'm in Turkey, I don't feel like a regular Turkish person. I feel like I can see like the things from different sides. So like from my Japanese aspect and from my Turkish aspect and also in Japan I kind of feel like I don't know I don't feel like a foreigner as well but I don't I don't feel like at home as well it's kind of very weird feeling but when I asked my other mixed friends they say that they don't feel like at home as well so I think it's just a kind of thing people who are mixed and experiencing the both cultures at the same time I guess let's talk about my culture identification when people ask in Turkey I said that I feel like Japanese and in Japan I say like I feel like Turkish but in reality it's just like like half and half, I just feel mixed. And I, when I say that to people, they, they don't accept that. They say like, pick one. I say the opposite culture. <laughs> 
because I don't know. And I stopped actually trying to identify myself because I think no need to identify yourself. Just I'm just mixed and that's my identification. So let's talk about the good sides and bad sides of being mixed. The good sides is you are likely to be more open-minded compared to monocultured people because you see the different cultures and you can compare to them and you can have a different aspect. Second one is learning new languages. I'm very good at learning new languages because I spend a lot of time learning languages when I was a kid. I'm very good at it and I'm fluent in four languages, German, Japanese, Turkish and English. Japanese and Turkish are my mother languages and English and German are my third, fourth, I don't know, languages. So yeah, I think language is a big point as well. Third one is always having something to talk about. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it's easier to make friends. The fourth one is I think the elder looking. I think I look pretty mixed. I love my kind of like mixed looking face. And let's talk about the negative ones of being mixed. I think the culture identification is very hard when you are mixed. It takes very long time to identify yourself. And I know that a lot of people get bullied because of their culture. And I'm very, very sorry for that. But just stay strong, appreciate your culture. If you don't know the other language, people usually expect you to be very good at that language. And if you cannot speak that language, people usually say that, oh, you cannot speak that language, like how? So I think that that is a, like a big expectation and I think expectation from society and from your parents can be a bit different when you are mixed and I think it can be pretty hard and other bad side of being mixed is you have to really have time learn both of the cultures and having a balance between the both of the culture is very hard in my opinion like maintaining the both of the cultures is so hard like trying not to lose your identification between of them loving the both of the cultures accepting the both of the cultures and especially if they're are very different like mine it takes a lot of time to accept both of them stay strong going to be okay it will take a time to accept yourself to accept your culture but it's all okay so i think that's it for today if you have any questions let me know down in the comments down below i will appreciate every single of your comments so bye for now let me see you in my next video bye